This conference will now be. Everybody and welcome to True Talks with Project Managers, brought to you by PMI Southern Maryland Chapter. Um, my name is Marina Preisic. I'm the president of the PMI Southern Maryland Chapter, and tonight we are at our sixth episode for True Talks. And uh, the title of tonight's uh, episode is Pro Bono Project Management, how you can hone your skills and contribute to society at the same time. Our host is no longer a secret. We have been having uh, the fortune to have Kendall Lott as our host for the past uh, five uh, um, episodes. And our new guests tonight are Beth May, the CEO of the Project Management for Change, and Micah Hannan, board member and former CEO of the Project Management for Change. A couple announcements uh, just uh, before passing on the voice to Kendall Law, just to make sure that we make uh, this experience uh, um, satisfactory to everybody since we are recording this and making available this recording for later uh, uh, views. Um, so I needed to ask everybody to turn off your cameras. I see that has already happened, so thank you. Turn on an active camera on your options up top um, for the go to meetings uh, um, options. Uh, so you'll be able to really enjoy the conversation with the participants and with our guests and the host who are talking. Use the chat for questions. Please, please do send the questions. We like to make this interactive and we will have, um, we will continuously monitor the chat. We will have Harry um, Zolkower, he is our VP, uh, our Vice President for the PMI Southern Maryland Chapter. Harry, if you want to show your um, um, camera now. Hello. Here is Harry. Harry will be monitoring the chat, so we'll make sure that we answer your questions. After the show, you'll receive one PDU. We will ask you to complete a survey. We do welcome your feedback to continuously improve how we are approaching this talk show. And we'll give you access online to view this um, talk show later. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you our host, who is also the very well-known host of the PM Point of View, um, Kendall Law. Hello, Marina. I'm trying to get my camera on. It, I keep clicking. It keeps clicking back. <laughs> and I'm Click. Stop sharing now. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're on. We're on. Look at my new headset. Here we go. Uh, dialing in tonight from Boise, Idaho. So, hello, PMI Idaho. If any of you are out there, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, uh, thanks for having me on again. How are you doing, Marina? Very well. Thank you. Thank you for being with us again. And you're sticking with us through episode number six. Yep, cruising into the end of the summer. Can you believe it? You guys talk to us in fall about starting it off in the middle of winter and here we are um i do want to reemphasize with folks go ahead and send in your questions uh per your feedback we won't be doing any break uh today we just kind of slide on through one guest to one guest we do take your questions as we can we'll curate them uh harry like a raptor looking for prey will catch the <laughs> questions as they come sneaking by um you'll have a lot of chances to uh, ask some questions tonight because we have lots of guests this time we're running three uh, so we'll have three guests that we're going to line up and keep keep working through tonight. Uh, and tonight's special because we're kind of all the people who know each other. In a lot of cases, it's kind of us it's us, us chickens in the same coop here in a certain sense. But I uh, wanted to ask you, Marina, and I, uh, and, and I think Harry as well, as leadership of the Southern Maryland chapter, what made you come up with this topic? Uh, every time I ask you guys, why this one? Why this one? Why now? What's up, guys? Yeah, so well, I'm going to call Harry. There is Harry. Go ahead, Harry. You need to take this one. You want to take all the 
Yeah, so the, the major reason why we selected this topic is that um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think there's um, a lot of uh, folks out there uh, uh, who are project managers that really are not aware of all of the uh, opportunities and benefits of doing pro bono project management work. So we thought this would be a good forum to really inform uh, folks of what's out there and, and and the benefits of doing pro bono work. And uh, Kendall, as you mentioned, um, there are several of us on this call who are actively doing pro bono uh, project management work, including myself. And so we wanted to share our experiences and the reasons why we think uh, it's really a, a good thing to do. Um, and judging from the number of people who are on this on this um, on this show, I think um, many of you are looking uh, for some uh, opportunities, per perhaps, or just are interested in what's out there and what are the benefits. So, anyway, that's that's why we chose this subject. Excellent. Well, thank you. So, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. If you guys want to clear out the cameras here. Um, to our folks, I, I will say a note and uh, for full disclosure, um, all of tonight's guests you may actually have run into if you've been in PMI at all around the DC Beltway, for example, um, you will probably run into them if you're regular at all because you're we're talking to, um, well, whether you've been part of Southern Maryland chapter, Montgomery chapter, uh, the DC chapter, you've probably run into some of us here that are involved. I personally have worked closely in the pro bono space as a project manager or in the, in support of getting project managers working in the pro bono, space, pro bono space with all of these folks. So I'm kind of, this is not a case of me finding a new guest or, or having one presented to me. These, these are colleagues of mine and friends of mine. And specifically, uh, an, all three of them have worked and continue to work with the Project Management for Change, which is a nonprofit. You'll hear about that tonight. But that's because we have a nexus of how the pro bono works here. So uh, yeah, in a certain sense, this is all stuff that I've been familiar with before, but we're gonna hear how they wanna address it so that all of you can understand how it might be valuable and uh, how you might get involved. So with that, our first guest, um, is, is not only one of the three who are close colleagues of mine, but he's also a friend and mentor. Frankly, he, he teaches me <laughs> when I don't know things. He has a background in projects, theory of constraints, lean, six sigma, and, 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 and. He knows that all that kind of stuff, and he's consulting to it. Uh, he started out at NASA as a presidential management fellow the same year I did in the government. So we were newbies to the Beltway together uh, back in, well, I won't tell you the year, long time ago. And uh, now he is... Forteza Consulting. He's also the only person I know whose business card says Project Portfolio Performance Improvement Coach. And the test to hire him is if you can actually say that. We'll work on his branding <laughs> later. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mike, you out there? I hear giggles. He doesn't want work. He just wants to have good titles. Uh, hey, Mike, come on up. And I will say, Mike and I and uh, Laura Bernard are co-founders and board members of PM for Change in that kind of board membership role. But why it matters and why pro bono work in the project management space matters is a big thing that Mike has been a preacher on and a talker on, and we'll get to that now. So Mike, come on, bring up your camera, then. Let's see your face. The, yes, I the got the face. camera on, but I'm not sure if uh, the settings are showing me. Okay, you're getting real close. Uh, I had the same problem. Marina, can we give us a, a setting to make sure Mike can be seen? Anything he needs to do? I'm gonna drink coffee. I'm not sure. Yeah, I didn't see any active camera setting. I just saw on or off camera. So I turned it on, but uh, anyway, I'm here. Uh, your camera should be on. Well, we'll keep rolling along here and hopefully it'll pop on. Mine also couldn't come. I kept saying it was on and it wasn't bringing me up, but we'll bring that up anyway. So Mike, welcome. Even though we can't see you, welcome. I hear you loud and clear. How you doing? Good. And hey, uh, do you want to make the intro to Beth too, or do you want to you want to hear uh, I'm taking that later you just you just go ahead and handle it so, so right right the now thing. yeah the mm -hmm. big thing for a lot of us you know some of you like Harry and others have been doing pro bono work uh, yourself Kendall right for a really long time you made it a priority probably when you were kids even it was just sort of part of your fiber and that's not my story at all right um, I had a strong public service vocation and that's why I went into the civil service uh, all those years ago but I, I always had the excuse, well, you know, I've got 
um, a pretty demanding project management job. You know, I've got uh, kids at home. You know, I want to coach my kids' baseball team. Uh, you know, I want to actually have like some some you know personal time on weekends. And you know, who has time to really get involved in all this pro bono stuff? And I learned, unfortunately, only too late. But at least I did learn better late than never. Uh, that it really is a great way to give to yourself. That part hadn't really hit me until I was in the thick of it, right? Where, hey, by giving back, I was growing my own skills. I was meeting more professional contacts. I was learning ways to apply, um, you know, my discipline of project management to achieve uh, ever higher impact. And and I don't know, I didn't always get that chance on the job, right? Oftentimes on the job, you're not encouraged to take risks or you have some boss that's in your way or taking credit for everything you do or whatever. And um, I really found like to spread my wings, it really helped to get a lot more involved doing pro bono stuff. And really when you and I were first chatting this whole PM for change, project management day of service concept, it was with some of that in mind, right? Where we said, hey, you know, P no PM is gonna be able to say, at least here in the DC area, I can't do donate some time on a federal holiday to help out once a year. Right, that, yeah. like if you can't even do that, um, like okay, maybe maybe some people can't understand. Uh, there's there's lots of demands on all of our time, but it was starting off saying, you know, let's make an offer they're going to have a hard time refusing, and that if they want to even stick their toe in the water and, and give this a try, uh, let's make it as easy on them as possible. And I think quite a few of those, you know, quite a few of us here who have, you know, certainly the Southern Maryland chapter, uh, Silver Spring chapters here. Uh, you know, when we were on the DC chapter board together, Kendall, um, you know, we kind of went out with this, like, hey guys, give it one shot. And if it's not the highest impact day you've ever had as a project manager, don't come back. And quite a few of us came back, right? Right. Well, I want to take, I want to move it away from that a little bit though, because I think we're going to get into that later. And I uh, want to get into some of the stuff that, that Harry and Marina had queued up for us to really want to tackle on behalf of their audience. And I, and, and I, I thought of you in this context, Mike, because you always said it best, I think, or have thought a lot about it, which is moving away from our own personal need in it, role of project management around being able to do it pro bono means we're helping nonprofits do it, right? So the nonprofit world, what is your feeling on the role of project management? You know, we, we, we do our PMBOK, we take our tests, we do our things, but the deal is project management has a real role, I think. And I think more broadly, one of our questions is its role in supporting our communities. And and that's what you help get me anchored on. So, how do you approach that yourself? Well, I think it all starts with whether you buy into the notion that you are in service to something larger than yourself. Yeah. Uh, and and even if you're not on, you know, even if you're on a project that's all about just helping your company make a bunch more money, um, that's still in service to something beyond yourself, right? There's a, mm. a team of people or a whole organization full of people that you're trying to help thrive. Right. So just this notion that, hey, yes, we all want to build our own careers. We'd like to get promoted We're we have some selfish needs. Um, you know, we'd like to eat. We, we'd like a roof over our heads. Right. Um, we like our kids college funds, well funded and all that. This notion of, hey, I'm in service to something else. Uh, I think is where it all started for me. And I think that's, you know, some of us kind of feel that intuitively when we get our first project management experience. Right. Sort of the magic of the team and the magic of you know, having a shared purpose that's bigger than any one person. Uh, but then that leads directly to, you know, how do I maximize my impact to be in service to others? Yeah, I think, and that's an opportunity we have. But I remember thinking when we were saying pro bono, not just for lawyers anymore. And the question <laughs> I got asked by both the nonprofit sector as well as when we first engage at one point, we we're talking with uh, people related to the White House, actually, or through the, the nonprofit sector uh, administratively effect, uh, attached to the White House. And the question was, pro I don't even like, what is project management? Like, wh what are you talking about? Wh why would anyone care what you're trying to set up here or do or funnel project managers for? And it begged the question, what is the real value of project management in this role? You know, and I was like, well, because we help things be efficient. And um, I think that wasn't a very strong answer. <laughs> I don't know. Why project management? We're not lawyers, we're not doctors, we're project managers without borders. Yeah, it's, it's in my mind, it's, there's no other discipline in existence whose sole purpose is to take the status quo and make it as, as, as far improved as possible, right? The whole point mm -hmm. of undertaking projects is we're not satisfied with the status quo. We, 
we're going to take a risk on something that might not pan out, but we have the expectation and faith that it's going to leave us in a much better place than we are today. Um, and so it's ultimately a, an expression of hope, right? And this need to, to, to achieve, you know, to make hope real with a professional discipline. Well, I guess our nonprofits need to be fed more hope, or rather they have hope. We're trying to bring them something, bring something to them, because I think that's part of what we're trying to get at here is, is why would a group of people who are signed up in a professional association consider working in the nonprofit sector in the sense of with their free time, with their time they want to put in service, as you said? Um, I, I, I just found it was so much about Project management is about taking inputs and causing something different in the output. I mean, it's fundamentally a change organization, right? A change operation. It's a transformation operation. Yep. And I felt that they represented need, but I hadn't thought of it as hope. I don't know. Do you want to expand on on how you've seen that happen before? Because you, you did some work with Salt Lake City, I think, in fact. I mean, it's already national in that sense. Yeah, with their local, their local United Way region. Um, so bottom yeah. line, you know, almost all nonprofits – uh, not all, but almost all have pretty big dreams and pretty severe resource <laughs> challenges. And and, Lots and, of hope. and so what what better playground for project managers, right? <laughs> <laughs> They've got the hope and we can deliver against it. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> we have no shortage of hopes and dreams, but not a whole lot of, of you know, practical you know capacity to to make them a reality. So help us prioritize and scope it and plan it and and actually make it real. And then let's get to the next one. Yeah, and and I think that's probably where we want to find out if we can start having that kind of impact. But again, I appreciated having you guys reflect that when I was asked the question and I was trying to figure out how to best answer it is like, why project managers, right? A lot of professionals can get free time, but why project management? And I just, it's my shout out to everyone that I, th I think you said hope is really nice. The f there are people trying to improve our communities and like the tools we have are meaningful. <laughs> like it actually matters. It's not just because I want to do service. I think this is a good industry to be doing it in. At least that's my take. You're right on. And this might be a great opportunity to bring Beth in because she's been yeah. neck deep in it for longer than maybe either you or me, right? Yep, for some time. So um, yeah, let me bring her in. So Beth, you out there? So we're, we're talking about now Beth May and some expertise and voice of experience as well. Um, she's also, you guys may have recognized her, if only because I think she's been to every True Talks. I see your name floating around, at least most of them anyway. So her biggest claim to fame may be that she's a participant in Southern Maryland's uh, True Talks as an audience member. Um, she comes with something of a pedigree for us as well. She's a software engineer originally until she found out um, what I call found the light and went to project management. She says it's her, she's challenged that it's going to the dark side. I, I call it seeing the light. But she's large systems integration type of person, you know, Lockheed Martin, IBM, all that stuff, and does massive integration work. And by the way, if you're on this call, it's very likely you've been on the other end of some of the work she's done because she was involved with the census development for years um, as that rolled out for us. And we all got to see the outcome of that recently. She's now at Robotic Research. Yes, hit their website. Yes, apply because she can't stop talking about how wonderful that company is and integration and change and amazing hierarchies and flat hierarchies and good culture because they get things done there. She gets things done as a project manager. Now, why I got you here, Beth? Is she sits at the intersection of volunteerism and nonprofit, PM volunteerism. She carries two badges of honor for us tonight, actually. She's the chief operating officer of the nonprofit Project Management for Change. I'll let you guess what it supports and what it tries to do. She's also been the active director for what, four or is it five now, PM Days of Service, where she's actually delivered and made that happen in person and virtually. She's pulled it off both ways. <laughs> So Beth knows something about how you actually get project managers doing this kind of work. So Beth, first of all, welcome. And Thank thanks you. for being on camera instead of just uh, a listener tonight. My pleasure. I am a big fan <laughs> of the snow. Yeah, I, and I appreciate you hanging in there. So I guess what we want to talk about a little bit, I'm going to come back to the community side for a second, but you've actually volunteered in a couple of roles and now had very much the senior leadership role as Mike was saying, about making up one example of how we can engage project managers with nonprofits happen. What has been your experience in engaging with PMs, both on the day of service where they volunteer their time to help nonprofits and in PM for Change and structuring that event? Like, 
how are you observing the stresses and the goodness for PMs in giving of themselves? So, well, I hadn't thought about the stresses. I can I can certainly try to think about that. I've mostly been oh, it's never stressful being a project manager. <laughs> I've been mostly focusing on the positive. So our our signature event is called the Project Management Day of Service. It's once per year. It's in February now, and I have led four of these, I believe, um, so far. Uh, this uh, 2022 will be our eighth uh, event. I started managing them about um, five years ago, and. Because it's only once a year, uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard to remember specifics about how the PMs felt. So uh, as a project manager, uh, leading other project managers, we of course understand the importance of metrics. And so we do an exit survey at the end of the event and we ask the project managers to fill out one survey and the nonprofits to fill out a different survey. So I took a quick scan of the uh, exit surveys that we received mm -hmm. from our most recent event to remind me what it is that keeps the PMs coming back and, and why the word spreads and why we get more PMs. And they talked about things like passionate nonprofit staff that are inspiring. They talked about smart other PMs who are smart and impressive and yeah. a joy to work with and learning from each other, PMs learning from each other. They talked about practicing skills, project management skills that they don't necessarily get to practice in their day-to-day -day job. And that's actually what brought me to Project Management for Change because when I started at Project Management for Change, in May 2017, as part of the organization, I had actually participated in all of the PIMDOS events before that, just as a day of PM, volunteering that one Thank day a you. year. You're right. Thank give, you. Give, give, just, <laughs> you can give one day a year, right? And I did that. And then uh, someone invited me to come to a, a kickoff meeting for planning the next event. And I said, sure, why not? And And ended up being all in. And the reason why is because after a very, very long career at a very big company, I was an independent consultant writing proposals. And I mostly did management volumes. I did some tech, but mostly did management volumes. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I was writing about how you manage a program. I wasn't actually managing programs. And I missed it. And so it occurred to me that if I couldn't do program management as my profession, I would do it as my hobby. Um, so that was where I was coming from. It's not going to be the reason for everybody. There are so many different advantages that we'll talk about for, for PMs. But for me, I said, well, I really miss executing programs. So let me do it as a hobby. Let me join PM for Change. And I think one month later, I was recruited to go work for in another corporate role for another company. And so now I was doing project management all day and all night and all weekend, which was fine because I love project management and I am a PM geek. So, hey, real quick, Beth, yeah. Beth, what Beth didn't say was she went to that one meeting to figure out how she might help plan the next year's event. And I think before the end of that meeting was the named PM for it. That's right. You, you said we need a new PM and I sort of raised my hand because uh, <laughs> I said, why, why shouldn't I raise my hand for this? And I interviewed with Mike that day uh, in real time after the meeting. And, and by the time I went home, I yes, I was named the PM, the director for the DC Regional Project Management Day of Service. So, and hey, know. real quick, uh, Augustina had a question. Hey, what are the requirements to volunteer? I don't want to scare Augustina or anyone else thinking that that is how we're going to rope you in somehow, right? This this turned out to be a match made in heaven, I think, with Beth. But no, we're, we're, we will find we always find a way to kind of match your availability, capacity, and skill and interest to to a need we have. So again, we can get into more detail with that. Um, maybe Beth, you have a better answer for that than I do, but I didn't want to scare Augustina away. <laughs> no, and we're yeah, gonna get, we're gonna get to some of those specifics about <laughs> what to engage with later. But I wanted to cover, and we need to probably disambiguate here a little bit of between PM for Change and PMDOS itself. But but I want to hold on that for a second though, if we can, because more broadly, more than getting a chance to do it, we want to make sure people understand why. Here's what I experienced, and Beth, I'd like you to speak to it, having had to engage volunteers and getting to see them work the floor like when we had the live event with the nonprofits. Let me tell you what I experienced, which is why I'd like you to speak to the benefits. When I was involved with chapter leadership, I would get calls from the outside saying, you represent a lot of project managers. When you're at DC, you got 10,000 people, 50,000 people on your email list, you got 10,000 active members, 250 active volunteers. I want them to go 
paint the fence, pick up trash, do a fun run. These are all good things to do. But what got me was it's not about just giving of yourself to have time to give of yourself. We can all do that. Many of us have other avenues for doing that in our community, through our centers and places of worship, et cetera. But there was something unique about doing it as a project manager, doing project management was what I what I saw was important. Now the question is, in what way can that become important for people? I mean, you just talked about how you got roped in. <laughs> Mike had to throw a break. Don't worry, if you talk to us, you're not going to get roped in. But what's some upside here? Yeah. So, what, so what's some upside getting to be a PM for a nonprofit? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, there are so many. Okay. So in in many jobs, you may, uh, and I think Mike or you alluded to this before, you might be grinding away on a day-to-day -day basis, not necessarily seeing the impact you're making or ne not necessarily um, having a big picture. Well, when you do nonprofits, skills-based nonprofit volunteering, uh, particularly in project management, you're typically dealing uh, directly with the people that you're impacting the most. So you get that immediate gratification because not only are you um, interfacing with people who care about what you're doing and need what you're doing, but they express appreciation. So you see the impact, you see them start to do things differently and better and, and achieve some results, uh, execute on their mission more effectively, and they, they appreciate you for that. And can we all say, now I can say this now, but it's the first time in a very long time that I can say it because I just started a new job with you know, with the company you just mentioned, Robotic Research, right? I can say it now, but for a very long time, I could not say I'm in a job where I feel appreciated and valued and I'm leveraging all of my skills in project yeah. management. And how many people can say that? So there are a few of us who can, and that's great. But for those who can't, this is a great way to get that gratification. And you're, you're, you're helping one nonprofit perhaps, or a couple of nonprofits, but they're helping whole communities. So it's a force multiplier effect, yep. right? You help them, they help a lot of people. So you are having a big impact. Not only that, um, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, uh, you get to learn from each other. You build a network. Um, there, there's something else that I wanted. Oh, mentoring. That's what I wanted to talk about. When yeah. we help our nonprofits as pro bono project managers, we're not coming in and saying, what do you need? Okay, I'll get back to you, work with my team, crank something out and hand it over the fence. That's not how it works. We are helping the nonprofits that we work with to learn how to do project management, right? And that makes us better project managers because you always get better at something when you teach it, right? It gives us great satisfaction because we're, we're not just giving them a fish, we're we're teaching them how to fish, right? And we're mentoring them. So it's a mentoring relationship. It's, you, you get infected by their passion. You learn, you broaden your horizons, you broaden your perspective because you get insight into a world that you may know nothing of. So it really can be enlightening. It can be very inspiring because nonprofits tend to be very, very passionate people. More often than not, a nonprofit organization doesn't have project management skills or they have some speak to it. anymore. Oh, I, you said something really interesting there. I actually observed in talking to some of that first tranche of nonprofits coming in, they didn't know there were fish. Like, <laughs> what is project management? It's like, no, do you realize that uh, one of the things is that I that I feel we do as project managers and maybe those of you on on the call do, we bring order out of the world of chaos, right? We're future tellers. Right. Everyone's like, get this thing done. It, the future is unknown. And of course, it's unknown. But we help think through using our tools. And of course, we can often be wrong. We got to be careful. But we think about how things could be and how we could get there. As Mike says, what might we do when you just use that the, the, the famous fishing analogy? Right. What I found is they didn't even know that was a thing. I remember more than once being said, wait, there are people who specialize in this showing them a Gantt chart, specialize in this. I'm like, oh yeah. And they make a lot of money doing it and they would love to come and help you, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in um, fact, tell us more about- them, When well, we ask them what project do they want, they're like, where do I start? I need help in everything. So they get all excited and get it. Yeah. Scoping is a big deal. So let me tell you about- You find out like- Let me them. tell you about- Yeah. Three- Three, um, three wonderful outcomes for our project managers who volunteer, uh, whether it's just on the day of service or with the organization. We have at least 
three, I believe at least three project managers who have worked with nonprofits through Project Management for Change who eventually ended up on the board of directors for those nonprofits because they developed a relationship, they liked wow. what they were doing, they were appreciated and they were invite, invited to join the board of directors. And that's a great experience. Okay, so that's that's wow. one great outcome that we've had is that we've had multiple PMs get onto the board of directors to help steer an entire nonprofit organization. Another outcome is we've had people get jobs. We've had a day of uh, service PMs who are just there for the day, uh, visit some of our sponsors and actually end up getting a project management job through that. We've had within our project management for change staff, we've had people get jobs through the network that they create with each other and or with nonprofits. And the third thing we've had is, um, I love this story. It's It may be a one-off, I'm not sure, but we had uh, at one day of service, we had a nonprofit bring with them a young woman who was volunteering with them. And she looked around at what was going on at the project management day of service and said, wow, these PMs are sharp. I wanna be like them. And she went and got her PMP. And now she's working in a project management job. So. I mean, where do, there's no end to the types, the kinds of benefits that you can get, um, feeling good, feeling appreciated, sharpening your skills, trying new things, trying things that you haven't tried before. Uh, you can find a way to do that. Usually within a nonprofit, there's some flexibility to take on different roles and try new things. It's just a great way for professional growth and to give back. So talk a little bit about, if you would, and again, we're going to cover at the end so people will understand some of what we're talking about in terms of opportunities. But in the role of a nonprofit called PM for Change that you are leading uh, in that context, how has the volunteering in that organization worked in terms of skills development? Um, I'm not even sure. Do people come in and, and go for something they don't normally do, or do they come in saying, I'm really good at risk and let me help you with risk, uh, Madam Chair? Like, how do they? How are you seeing the volunteering at the organizational level? I think both. I think um, in the past, it has been more the case that people bring a skill uh, that they may or may not be doing in their daily job, and they say, this is what, what I want to do at pm for change But part of our own onboarding process is to have a, a nice one-on-one -on -one conversation about yeah. what are your interests? What do you hope to get? I and mean, that's what Mike talked to me about my first day. What are your interests? What do you hope to get out of this? What do you want to do? So it, you might come, you might contact PM for Change thinking, oh, I think you have a need and I think I can feel it because I have a skill. But through that conversation, we might decide that in fact, that you have enough desire and let's say intelligence to try something that you don't necessarily have a lot of experience or any experience doing and we have a need and we agree to do that right mm -hmm. so so mostly people come in to do things that they're they're already have some expertise in whether or not they're getting to practice it on a daily basis um, but sometimes we get people coming in just wanting to help and and to, to answer the one question that Augustina asked you don't have to be a certified PNP uh, you don't even have to be a practicing project manager. You just have to have the right skill set uh, to be to be able to add value to what we're doing. I want to take a few minutes and go before I bring in Harry and we get to some some broader stuff. Would you go ahead now and describe for those that might not know what is the event that kind of triggered a lot of our ability to funnel PMs? The PM Day of Service. We call it PMDOS, folks. Um, but I think you have such a grasp of how that happens um to tell everyone about the event this is their their chance to do the one day thing just, sure. just explain that part to us sure so we ask pms to sign up and when we ask the pms to sign up we ask them about their skill sets in certain categories and also what if they have any preferences in terms of uh which types of nonprofits, uh, which domains they want to volunteer in whether it's the arts or um uh youth or um, uh, career veterans. counseling or whatever the category, veterans, yes, veterans is a big one, thank you. I was uh, just at a loss for words. And, and then we also ask nonprofits to sign up and we ask them what kind of project do you need help with? 
And we go through our matching process to try to make the best possible match between our PM skills and interests in terms of what cause they want to support and our nonprofits causes and their needs in terms of what skills they need. And then on the day of service, two to four project managers are assigned to each nonprofit. And each nonprofit will bring one to three representatives. And they'll be seated at the same table if it's a physical event. This past uh, year, it was a virtual event, and we had breakout rooms. So and it, it worked very well, and it worked very, very well. <laughs> it, it went extremely well. We got a lot of very positive feedback from ev all participants, from everyone concerned, that it went very well. So a virtual event in a, in a breakout room, uh, in the real event around a, a big table in the Stamp Student Union at the University of Maryland, a big banquet table in the Grand Ballroom. And <clears throat> you start by talking to the nonprofit about their back the background of the organization and then you get into what they need what are their most pressing needs what is the project they want to solve today and it could be something that's already in flight it could be something brand new that they haven't even planned it could be something that's in flight was in flight but got stalled because they they hit a brick wall they don't know how to get around it or over it, it could be anything that they need help with and then the project managers at a, as a team collaborate with the nonprofit to solve that issue, to, to help them develop a plan that's actionable, that they can go back to their organization with the next day and start executing. So we focus mainly on five things and we provide templates with some amount of success. Some participants use the template, some don't, some like it, some don't, but they are a good basis from which to start having yeah. these conversations. One is the scope. What's in scope, what's out of scope, what are the boundaries, right? What are the constraints? One is the WBS, the work breakdown structure. How can we break down what needs to be done? One is the risk register. You can't do a project without a risk register. Uh, and one is the stakeholder register, similarly important. And identifying all the stakeholders, those are usually very fruitful conversations because the nonprofit doesn't necessarily think in those terms. And, and when we start saying, well, who, you know, who else is involved? And then they start realizing they have a lot more stakeholders than they had previously thought that needed to be considered. And then the last one is the next steps. And it's sort of the beginnings of a high level schedule so that yeah. we ha they have something that they can actually um, use to keep the momentum going. And fun fact, you only get about five hours to do this, right? It, it's and a day of service. Uh, one day. How long is it now? How, how much effort do people get getting to sit at the table? Or getting to sit with their breakout room how much effort how many how many hours is is it about four now or five oh, or no it's 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 well so when we when we did this event in person uh for the first six events it was from 9 a.m to 4 30 p.m with a lunch break and, and with us a, a break for a, a speaker or some activity uh when we did it virtually we 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 knew it wasn't realistic to ask people to sit in front of their computers for that long. So we started a little bit later than that and ended it a little bit earlier than that. But it's a good solid five to seven hours of work. You do get PDUs. Oh, and, PDUs. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and there are, uh, depending on which certification you have for a PMP, there are 25 out of the 60 required uh, PDUs for recertification every three years can be from volunteering, from giving, from giving back. Part of it is volunteering part of it is practitioner. So um, 25 of those 60 can be from giving back. And, and so you spend a whole day and then some of the PMs, and I was one of these, my very, my, not my first, but my second PIMDOS as just a PM off the street, just there for the day. I worked with a nonprofit who has been with us at every PIMDOS since. And I said, you know what, this, this project's really interesting to me. Would you like my help going forward? And they said, yes. And we've had a lot of PMs do that. In fact, that's why how a few of them ended up on the boards of directors for some of the nonprofits. I said, hey, can I continue to help you with this? And I did. And I continued to work with them for another three years or so um, until I started working with Pain for Change. And I think there was even an overlap. I continued to help them. So, so it's not, it can be just the day, a, a good solid seven hours of huge accomplishments. And I got to tell you, my favorite part of the event, very favorite part is at the end, I yeah. come to the microphone and I say, share with us how you feel about today's experience and invariably every single year including this year when we did it virtually we get numerous nonprofits who say cannot believe how awesome this was the project managers who were helping me are great we made great progress and now i have a plan i can execute that i never had before so i mean that you know that just you know that's why we do it that's what you can get you get this recognition this real 
appreciation from the nonprofits you're helping. And that's, that, that goes a long way. Yep, and we get to have them report each time. Uh, and one of the thing, everyone listening in on this, you will have an opportunity to find out either on the show tonight or when we send out a follow-up email, the opportunity to find out how you can sign up for next year's uh, PM Day of Service. Do we have a date for that already when people are targeting when that will actually happen? Yeah, you know, I should know the date, but there are too many twos and zeros in it. It's February 20th, 21st or 22nd. It's Saturday, February 20th. Mm. Uh, we wanted to do it on President's Day. It's the Saturday before President's Day. We wanted gotcha. to do it on President's Day, but we couldn't get the venue. And you, Maryland's Project Management Center for Excellence has been such a wonderful partner all these years. We don't want to change venues, so we had to uh, stick with a Saturday date. So it's Saturday. Yeah, know, the the day. Saturday I'm seeing in February 2022 is the 26th. Oh, so it might be the 19th. It's right before... Uh, President's Day. But anyway, we'll have that. You guys will be able to find it PM for change and you'll be able to, and also if you look on PM Day of Service, you'll be able to, to lock that in. Now you said something interesting about uh, doing the last one. It was unreasonable to expect people to be on Zoom all day uh, to be able to do that. So in light of that, uh, Southern Maryland has said these shows have to only be one hour. So with that, I'm going to bring on our third guest who's actually got something to tell us because I've been excited because he's kind of helped correct some of the stuff I had been trying to look at. Uh, Harry, you out there? So, Harry, you got there? You coming up? So everyone knows Harry because he's like the orchestrator of a lot of this stuff. He is your vice president if you're uh, one of your vice presidents, uh, vice president if you're at the uh, Southern Maryland chapter. And uh, he's been in various roles with the chapter, so he's a representative volunteer to our industry. So I appreciate that in Harry generally. And then very specifically, Harry rolled into PM for Change to help us figure out some of the business development, some of the fundraising. I wasn't getting it done myself, and I observed him helping Ideas Man, project manager with Ideas. That's Harry. And uh, now he's taken on a new role. So he's an example of someone who I've observed getting to use his skills in different channels. And that's what I actually wanted to have you talk a little bit about, another opportunity for people to engage Harry. So Harry comes to us when he's not spending his time volunteering for everything, he actually does work for a living as a PM at salesforce.com. So another great company. If you get a chance to apply, you should. And uh, Harry can uh, tell you how wonderful his environment is. But Harry, welcome now in the hat as someone who's working in PM for change and specifically driving something not PM DOS, continuous value delivery. Tell us about continuous value delivery. Yeah, it, actually, it's a good segue from what Beth was just talking about for the day of service. Um, as Beth mentioned, uh, it's one day, a full day of, of, you know, project managers paired up with nonprofit organizations working on scope for one or more projects, as well as other things like the stakeholder register, risk register, et cetera. Mm. Um, what, what the continuous value delivery program does is take that day you know the one day concept and really extend it throughout the whole year um so uh what we're doing right now is uh th these are short-term projects that uh we are working with nonprofits to assist them at, it really is um i see it almost as if we are <clears throat> in the analogy of like uh building a house we're sort of like the general contractors. So what we're doing <laughs> is we're we're bringing together um, this the the skills and the interests of project managers with the needs of the nonprofit organizations, and we build a team where the you know our our project managers are really. Um, what I consider our team leaders or like a general contractor, we bring in as needed into these projects, we'll bring in somebody who's a subject matter expert in marketing or let's say fundraising or grant writing. We've got actually one project right now where we brought in um, somebody actually has a dual uh, skill in grant writing and as a project manager. So it's kind of a, um, a real bonus to have this person on the team, but um, so the CVD or the continuous value de delivery program is really taking that concept 
uh, from the day of service and extending it out uh, throughout the year rather than as one day. And also we are um, uh, preserving the idea of a team approach where we have uh, multiple people on a team uh, working with that nonprofit organization. Um, the, cool, the really cool thing about this is that the nonprofits that we in, are engaged with now and in, in the past, their needs are, are multifarious. I mean, it could be that they need fundraising help, they need uh, board development help, they may need marketing help, uh, strategic planning. They, they, they go in so many different directions, software um, helping them customize project management um, software. And what we do is um, we designate a project manager as the team leader who is really kind of the glue to all of the, you know, to the, to the team in the project. And so as needed, what they'll do is they'll pull in a subject matter expert, which is within the organization, or we may uh, try to find somebody outside of the organization. Um, one example uh, is um, we have a, um, uh, a project manager in France um, and uh, who, uh, you know, we, we have um, um, challenges with, uh, you know, understand, I, I don't speak French, unfortunately, um, and he speaks a little bit of, of English. So, uh, <laughs> so we brought in a translator, a volunteer translator, actually we had two of them, who speaks uh, fluent, uh, both of them uh, speak fluent uh, French and English. So those are the kind of situations where we're trying to bridge the gap, where we'll bring in s subject matter experts that may not be solely project managers, but are led, that team will be led by uh, a, a project manager. So, so Harry, t tell me something here, because it, it is something that Mike has actually highlighted to me many years, and we heard a question on it today. If somebody were involved in continuous value delivery, they get to you through project management for change. You can hit that, pmforchange.org. Uh, but how do they not you – know, you know the deal with volunteers? They become serial volunteers. I mean, look at yourself, right? Yeah. How do we keep people from getting hooked in deeper than they – can be. They're like, I want to help. I want to participate. I wouldn't mind doing some over the whole year, but you know, only so many hours, guys. I have a real job and a family, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How do how do we help help them be most effective and yeah. not feel trapped or ignored? Yeah, no, that's a that's a really good question. Everyone's got different motivations. Uh, as Mike mentioned before, you know, we all have lives to live. You know, many of us have, you know, spouses and children and and parents that we're taking care of. So to, you know, what we try to do uh, as best as we can is um, upfront when we're bringing somebody into, um, into the world of volunteering, you know, we do really an, an assessment of their interests, what they're interested in doing, what yeah. are their motivations? You know, it could be, uh, obviously money is not, <laughs> is not in the equation, but you know, it's things like, you know, people are motivated by doing good, Good work and helping nonprofits, and I think Beth alluded to the fact that some people really want to hone their skills as a project manager, but may not have the opportunity to do so um, in their current job. So, what, so, 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 Kendall, what, what I'm trying to say is that what we try to do up front is really understand the person that we're plugging into these projects to understand what their skills, their interests are, what motivates them. Um, also, their time availability. Um, and yeah. the cool thing about CBD, the CBD programs, is these are short-term projects, so no more than three months. Okay. So for somebody who says, well, look, you know, I'm going to take a vacation, you know, in, in the summer, I, you know, I won't have time to do that. Well, there is, you know, it's fine to, to be able to take on one project, take a break for three months, come back and do another project. We've, we've had that situation. Uh, several so, times people come in and out which is strengthen, great wow. strengthening your skills getting to try new things working with other pms as a team I, that i hadn't realized you guys are working with as well uh yeah. engaging in, as far away as france uh as necessary um i want to bring all of our guests back up for a lightning round before we get into our last advertisements on this uh mike and uh beth are you out there too join join me and harry here on the stage uh come up with those cameras um 
because I think having having been involved in some way and coming at it from different reasons, all three of you in different ways, and you you've described that a bit. I'd like to know as you've engaged in either PM for Change, the organization that helps structure this, or on the day of service itself. You know, as you think about your pro bono work, your work as a project manager supporting this profession in this market, what was the single biggest skill that you can think of? Or if you have a, a bunch of them, what was the one, what was one of the ones that was most powerful for you that you got to give? When you showed up and you were the person who could, from your perspective, what was so important for you that you could give? Who'd yeah. like to answer that first? I'll, Lightning round, go, Harry. There's a, there's, a, there's a few things that stand out. One is it really helps crystallize my listening abilities uh, or capabilities because I think what is really critical as a volunteer, especially as a team leader, is to really hear and listen. And you know, the difference between hearing, hearing and listening is listening is really honing in and understanding what somebody's talking about. But with nonprofits, it's sometimes you're presented with information that has absolutely little to no, nothing to do with what they really need. <laughs> and sometimes what you have to do is kind of take the weeds out and get right to the, to the soil, you know, to the, to the earth, to the, to the heart of what they need. And sometimes you have to dig into that to really understand what is it they need, because they may say, hey, we need, uh, we really need, um, you know, software. But it turns out that it has nothing to do with software. It may have to do with a policy or procedure or not knowing exactly the direction that they want to go, those kinds of things. Listening and critical analysis, what I just heard here, there, great. Beth, what's one of the things that you were able to give of yourself that you found very interesting for you as a volunteer in this context? Uh, following on to what Harry said, it's doing that and then connecting people to resources, whether it's other people or organizations or my staff at PM for Change, whatever it may be. I, I really enjoy being a connector and I enjoy being able to use those listening skills to understand what connections need to be made. Um, and I problem solving, absolutely problem solving. I see project management as just really problem solving on on steroids whether it's risk management change management or stakeholder management whatever uh whatever the there's so many challenges that uh running a nonprofit has and running um our nonprofit and then helping another nonprofit other nonprofits have challenges so solving those problems that's fun excellent mike what's one of the best things you've got yeah, to give of yourself i gotta say i'm not shy i'm not trying to hide it's just something with the cameras glitching so uh, uh, fully engaged here. You know, two things, uh, Kendall, for the lightning round. One, the very simple, basic thing we, we PMs learn or should learn early in our careers about <laughs> how do you take some big ambition, some lofty goal, and break it down into something that we can do within some reasonable near-term period within our resource constraints, mark it done, and use that as a platform to springboard to the next thing, right? Um, you know, great example, uh, United Way of Salt Lake had this big ambition to eliminate poverty in the greater Salt Lake area, right? Okay, well, what are we gonna do? Long story short, <laughs> they said, well, gra high school graduation rates in the most depressed school districts, they're at the worst numbers. Um, let's boost those. In fact, let's boost them dramatically. In fact, let's close the gap between that school district and the other ones in the local area. And let's do it by like next May. And of course, we didn't solve that whole problem just by next May, but boy, did we almost close the gap within one year. And then suddenly we started to learn where the biggest leverage points were to springboard to the next thing. And now all of a sudden we're really moving the needle. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm gonna get ready to close this out here. So all three of you are gonna get one more whack at something, which is your advertisement section, as it were. And Micah, you had highlighted something to me that I tend to overlook, so I greatly appreciate that. Tell us about this idea that you don't have to be certified to be here. Oh yeah, two, two interesting things we kind of learned along the way. Yeah. One was because, as um, Beth said, we have a team of PMs at a, at a table for the events. And similarly, with the continuous value delivery, it's not just one person, one nonprofit, um, at least not typically. Uh, a junior person that isn't sure they're ready to kind of lead one by themselves 
can join a team and, and be mentored and learn. And, and we've found every single time that they actually contribute more than they think right away. So that's yep. super cool. So especially yep. if you're looking to cut your teeth on some, you know, real hands-on PM experiences, some resume building stuff, and some learning opportunity with, with fellow PMs that might be more seasoned than you, um, that's all built in. And then another great thing, people said, oh, I don't know if I want to help you guys because I don't see that you've, you've helped my favorite charity here. So, oh, well, why don't you bring them along and then you can help them. <laughs> right? Yep, yep, that's so a we, great point. Yep, that's that is a great point because we always are looking for nonprofits to help. And by the way, so all of you, I can see your names here. Uh, Debbie, Augustina, Ron, Randy, David, Reza, Reza, Candice, Lindsay, Chris, it goes on and on. What Mike just said is something very, very important, which is you may all be PMPs, maybe, or you're certainly possibly with the Southern Maryland chapter. It is an opportunity to invite junior colleagues that you may know at work or that are related to you to get a chance to be involved, not only to do something good, but to what Mike said, actually be an environment where somebody is going to help you learn more, if only to listen better, critical analysis, an opportunity to use some of the PM tools. That's actually a call to action for you guys, not just for you to do it, but to recognize it's an opportunity and with this organization even to help set up how people can do PM otherwise. Uh, Beth, let's roll over to you real quick. Um, what do we need to know about uh, connecting with PM for Change or for PIMDOS, something we haven't heard, something people need to know. What do you need to share today that they need to know to connect? We know the date. Have we started planning yet? <laughs> uh, actually, we're, we're getting a late start this year because we finally, I think we finally gotten to the point where rinse and repeat. Um, right. so that we don't need to plan for an entire year. It is February 19th. Thank you to those of you who looked it up and put it in the chat. It's February 19th and you uh, go to pindos.org. But I, 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 need to, I need to have two calls to action. One is yep. I, on our staff, we are, are very much in need of a communications lead or director, depending on what your skill set is and where you fit in, and very much in need of a finance lead or director and a fundraising leader or director. And it can be finance slash fundraising, one person, or it could be two different positions. It depends, right? Very much in need of those. Having said that, I need to say that skills-based volunteering is so important, uh, especially in project management in our field, because our, this applies to every industry. As the PMI Virtual Experience Series yep. demonstrated, it applies to athletics and uh, restaurants and everything, right? So you don't have to volunteer with PM for Change, either with our sta on staff or at the day of service. Volunteer anywhere. Go to idealist.org or uh, PMI VRMS, uh, the Volunteer Relationship uh, Management System, or volunteermatch.org, or coach help coach a local team. I helped coach a UAS for STEM drone team, and I did the project management coaching, making sure they were scheduling, uh, defining objectives and scheduling their meetings to meet those objectives, uh, high school students. And they won the competition at the national level a couple weeks ago. And it was very gratifying. So you can do project management coaching, volunteering almost anywhere. So if you don't do it with us, do it somewhere. Thank you for that, and congratulations on your uh, victory by extension. Harry, um, tell us what they need to know to connect with you. I saw something in the in the chat. What would you tell everyone from where you're sitting? Yeah, real quick. Um, if you're interested in volunteering with the continuous value delivery and being on a either as a team leader or on a team, um, all you need to do is just send an email to cbd at pmforchange.org, and we'll set up a meeting, get to know you, and put you on a project. And Harry and his Southern Maryland hat will make sure that this information flows to you after the after the fact here as a registrant of yeah. tonight's event. I want to thank all three of our guests because I see you all the time in various things, and it's great to see you here in this role with a chapter. Um, and so I greatly appreciate it and thank all of you. And then one last call out from my advertisement. Uh, those of you that might be interested in hearing the Kendall Mike Yak Attack, next week will be a, we're going to have a release of a an episode of the PM Point of View. It will come out on the subscription feed there on, on Apple or iTunes, uh, where we talk to a product manager who a CEO who uh, has driven a whole new technology in toasters and has put a $300, $400 toaster on the market. Uh, so product management, project management, you decide. But you can hear me and Mike talk about it on the show next week. With that, I am going to say goodnight to number six and hand this over to Marina, who will walk us out. Bye. Marina. Well, thank you. Close Bye. us out. Thank you, Keith.
my Carrie and thank you Beth thank you everybody so much uh, this was indeed a beautiful episode I'm going to share just a, a couple notes just to complete our uh, um, just to close our night and complete our final uh, announcements so uh, remember after the show you will receive a one PDU um, please take the survey and you'll have access online to the show again. Our book club is uh, returning on September 16th. Uh, the PMI Southern Maryland chapter holds uh, normally a monthly book club. But we take a break uh, the month of August and the month of December normally. So book club on September 16th. True Talks will also take a break in September. We'll come back during the fall because in September we are all collaborating for a very large symposium among all chapters in the Maryland and DC region. So this is a great effort that we are offering as um, as all chapters uh, and it will be on september 22nd and 23rd so please uh, take a look uh, um, on uh, your chapter website for uh, registration the registration is um coming up and it's being uh, uh, made available on the chapter website and finally um, I wish you all good night. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you back in the fall. Stay tuned for more information. Thank you, everybody, and have a good night. Thanks, Marina. Bye -bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This conference will now be recorded.